Welcome to Lesson 8a, Pipe Flow Introduction. In this lesson, we'll do a quick review of average speed and mass conservation for pipe flow. We'll look at the differences between laminar and turbulent pipe flow and define something called a critical Reynolds number. We'll define hydraulic diameter and discuss its application. And we'll do some example problems along the way. First, a quick review. Because of the no slip condition, u equals zero at the wall. This velocity profile shows u of r, where r is the radius from the center line. And we're talking about a round pipe of diameter d. Because there's a slope, del u del y, if y is the distance from the wall, we have a shear stress tau w at the wall. I drew it to the right, meaning that the fluid is trying to drag the pipe to the right. Or if you think about the fluid, the pipe wall is trying to keep the fluid from moving to the right. So tau wall on the fluid would be in the opposite direction. V average is the average speed at a cross section. But we usually drop the AVG subscript. So from now on, we'll just call V the average speed. For constant diameter pipes and for incompressible flow, V is a constant down the pipe. If this is our constant diameter pipe and location one is near the entrance, you might see a velocity profile that looks like that with average velocity V1 further downstream profile has developed at location 2, so we have average speed v2. But if the flow is incompressible, these average speeds must be the same. Of course, the mass flow rate has to be constant through a pipe, even if the diameter is changing by conservation of mass. And even if it's compressible, we could write rho 1 v1 a1 equal rho 2 v2 a2. So you can see that if it's incompressible, the densities are the same. And if it's constant diameter pipe, the areas are the same. And that's why V1 equals V2. If there's a change in diameter, the average speed will change. But this equation has to still hold. Now I want to briefly compare laminar versus turbulent flow. I have two columns with corresponding comments. Laminar flow can be steady or unsteady, but turbulent flow is always unsteady. With turbulent flow, there's all these eddies mixing things around. By the way, steady means that the flow field at any instant in time is the same as at any other instant in time. But because of these vortices or eddies in a turbulent flow, it's always unsteady. However, a turbulent flow can be steady in the mean, and that's what we'll generally look at in this course. We call that a stationary turbulent flow. Laminar flow can be one, two, or three dimensional. Turbulent flow is always three dimensional again because of these random swirling eddies. But a turbulent flow can be 1D or 2D in the mean. Again, that's what we'll always talk about in this course. Laminar flow has regular, predictable behavior. For example, when you inject dye, you get a nice streak line that's straight. Turbulent flow has irregular or chaotic behavior, which cannot be predicted. There's always randomness. If you inject dye into a turbulent pipe flow, you'll get all kind of random motion of the streak line. For laminar flow, analytical solutions are possible. We do some of those in Chapter 9 of the Changal Symbala textbook. For turbulent flow, no analytical solutions exist. It's too complicated because of the unsteady 3D chaotic eddies. So typically we solve for the mean flow only. For the purposes of this course, it's important to know that laminar flow occurs at low Reynolds number and turbulent flow occurs at high Reynolds number. This leads to a discussion of critical Reynolds number. In other words, at what Reynolds number does pipe flow transition from laminar to turbulent? First, let's define the Reynolds number. For a given pipe flow, we have some average speed v, pipe diameter d, and flow properties mu and rho. Note that d is the inner diameter, of course. The outer diameter has nothing to do with the flow. We define our Reynolds number as rho v d over mu, but recall from a previous lesson that nu is the viscosity over rho, which we call the kinematic viscosity. So a simpler expression for Reynolds number is V D over nu. For a round pipe, the critical Reynolds number is around 2300. What that means, that for typical pipe flows, if Reynolds number is less than about 2300, we have laminar flow in the pipe. If the Reynolds number is between 2300 and about 4000, we have transitional flow, which is kind of between laminar and turbulent. And if RE is greater than about 4,000, the flow is turbulent. These are just so-called rules of thumb, meaning they're approximate values. You can have turbulent flow at Reynolds numbers in this range and sometimes even below 2,300 if your pipe is very rough or if you have lots of vibrations and stuff like that. Likewise, you can have laminar flow to Reynolds numbers above 4,000 if you have very smooth 
pipe walls, and very carefully controlled inlet and very low vibrations. In other words, these are just approximate values, but we'll use them to define whether the flow is laminar or turbulent or transitional. I'll make a list of how these values can change. They would vary with pipe roughness, vibrations, upstream disturbances, for example elbows or valves in the flow upstream that disturb the flow and can cause it to be turbulent or transitional even for Reynolds numbers in the laminar range. So keep in mind that these values are not set in concrete, they vary, but we'll use these values to analyze our problems. Now I want to discuss hydraulic diameter. This is used for non-round pipes, for which we define the hydraulic diameter d sub h is 4ac over p, where ac is the actual cross-sectional area of the pipe or duct, and p is called the wetted perimeter, which is the portion of the perimeter in contact with the fluid. It's the actual perimeter if you're talking about a gas or a pipe that's totally filled with a liquid, but we have to be careful if we have a channel. Let's take for example an open channel where water or some other liquid fills up only a portion of the channel. Suppose this height is one meter and its width is two meters. You don't count this portion of the inside of this channel because it's not exposed or wetted by the liquid. In this case, the cross-sectional area is 1 meter times 2 meter. This is that portion of the area that is filled by the liquid. And P would be 1 meter plus 2 meter plus another meter here, which equals 4 meters. So DH would be 4AC over P, or 4 times 2 square meters over 4 meters. So the hydraulic diameter is 2 meters in this example. What does this mean and why do we use hydraulic diameter? As we'll see later, there are correlations and empirical equations for Darcy friction factor F as a function of Reynolds number, and those are all based on round pipes. We'd like to use these correlations even if the pipe is not round. So what we're saying is that this actual channel is equivalent to flow through a round pipe of diameter dh. Here we calculated our dh as 2 meters, so flow through this circular pipe is equivalent to flow through this actual pipe or channel if we use hydraulic diameter. But there's a problem with doing this, namely that this cross-sectional area is not the same as this cross-sectional area. So when calculating m dot or v dot, use the real cross-sectional area AC, not the circular cross-sectional area, which would be pi dh squared over 4. In other words, this area. We must use this actual area, not this area, when calculating m dot or v dot. Mathematically, when we use m dot equal rho v a, we use a c, the actual cross-sectional area, and the actual v, which is the actual average speed through the non-circular pipe. So when you have a non-circular pipe and you know mass flow rate, you calculate v as m dot over rho a c. But when you're calculating Reynolds number to find Darcy friction factor, for example, we use dh and the actual v, not v for the equivalent circular pipe. Re is rho v dh over mu. For our above example, suppose the volume flow rate is 10 meter cubed per second. We had calculated that the actual cross-sectional area was 2 meters squared, so the average speed is v dot over ac, or 5 meters per second. Use this value in calculating Reynolds number. The equivalent round pipe has a hydraulic diameter dh, so the cross-sectional area a round is pi dh squared over 4. If we would use that to calculate the average speed, we would get v dot over pi dh squared over 4, which turns out to be 3.183 meters per second. You might be tempted to use that v to calculate your Reynolds number, since we're kind of pretending that we have this round pipe, but we have to be careful to use this speed, not this speed. Do not use this speed in calculating the Reynolds number. Once you know the actual average speed, in this case 5 meters per second, and we know dh, we can calculate a Reynolds number. So the bottom line, use dh and the actual average speed to calculate Reynolds number, then use that Reynolds number to calculate Darcy friction factor, and use the actual cross-sectional area and the actual average speed for calculation of m dot or v dot. Let's do an example. Suppose we have a rectangular air conditioning duct, air flows through at a cool 15 degrees C, and we're given the duct width and the duct height, as well as the actual average speed 
through the duct. We want to calculate the hydraulic diameter, volume flow rate, and then try to determine if this is laminar, transitional, or turbulent. Let's use our equation for hydraulic diameter. 4AC over P, the cross-sectional area, is the width times the height, which is that cross-sectional area. And the perimeter includes this height, this width, this height, and this width, since the air wets the whole surface. So the wetted perimeter is 2 times the width plus 2 times the height. This gives us 0.375 meters. The volume flow rate, remember, is V times the actual cross-sectional area, where this V is also the actual average speed, which was given up here. So we have V times AC, which gives us 0 0.60188 meter cube per second, which I round to three digits. So these are our final answers to three digits for DH and V dot. Now we pretend we have a round pipe of diameter DH. So to calculate Reynolds number, RE is rho V DH over mu, or VDH over nu, at t equal 15 degrees C, we look up nu in the tables. In our book in the appendices, we get this value of nu. So the Reynolds number is 3.21 meters per second times the hydraulic diameter from up here, 0 0.375 meters, divided by nu, which gives us 81,900 to three digits. Is this laminar, transitional, or turbulent? We use this Reynolds number to determine that. Since Reynolds' number is much greater than 4,000, this is definitely turbulent. I'll say finally that even if this Reynolds number were below 4,000, it could still be turbulent because in an air conditioning duct, there's usually a lot of elbows, vibrations, and seams between sections of the duct. These are more likely to make the flow transition to turbulent. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.